It's big, it's rugged, this one floats, and it burns Jet A. And those are just a couple of reasons why people oftentimes mistakenly call the Quest Kodiak a Cessna caravan, but as you'll see in this production, the Quest Kodiak Series 2 is unquestionably its own airplane. Now before I kick the rust off my float flying skills, let's do some groundwork with Mark Brown. He's Quest Chief Devil Pilot and knows a little bit about this airplane. Quest Aircraft Company began in the late 90s, early 2000s as uh, basically a need uh, for a modern day Bush airplane. So our two founders, Tom Hamilton and Dave Oatman, came together, drew the airplane on the back of a napkin as a, as a design concept for a modern day Bush airplane. Uh, from that day onward to 2004, uh, we built the very first Kodiak. Our first flight was in 2004 and we received certification in 2007. And the entire kind of idea behind the Kodiak was it was a clean sheet design, modern day Bush airplane. And it did everything that the, the humanitarian groups needed in an airplane. It landed uh, and took off in a very short uh, runway, so it has stole capabilities. Uh, it had the ability to carry a huge payload, so up, upwards of 3,500 pounds. It could carry up to 10 people, so a pilot plus nine passengers. And the most important thing is it needed to run on jet fuel. Uh, in certain parts of the world, avgas is nearly impossible to get. So it actually was more cost effective and of course safer to have a turbine on the front of the airplane than anything else. So the Kodiak 100 is powered by a PT6-34 engine, uh, which produces 750 horsepower. Uh, the reason we picked the Dash 34 variant was because at the time it was the most widely produced single stage PT6, which meant that the cost to overhaul and the part supply around the world was better than any other PT6. So the cost to overhaul this variant is much less than most of the others. Now it's still not going to be chump change when it comes time to overhaul that turbine. Aircraft Blue Book estimates a Dash 35 variant overhaul at $240,000. It includes installation and the engine has a 4,000 hour TBO. Compare that to the Pratt Dash 114A variant used in the Cessna 208 Caravan at $250,000 for an overhaul and that has a 3,600 hour TBO. So that means the direct operating costs of the Kodiak are much lower. Uh, it, it's also an engine that's specifically tuned to operate at lower altitudes. It came from the ag industry uh, where the Kodiak's unpressurized, so uh, it needs an engine that's basically optimized for 10 to 12,000 feet, which the Dash 34 is. So the Kodiak is a wet wing design airplane. One of the design, the early design ideas was that the fuel is all going to sit behind the main spar. Uh, which is actually rare in a lot of airplanes and what that does is it means that should you have a runway departure you have an entire crumple zone in front of the main spar that doesn't have any fuel in it whatsoever so making it a very safe design fire resistance design another thing that we have is this magnetic dipstick to check fuel levels below the wing how this works is there's just notches with different pound levels and today I have about 500 pounds in the wing, so if I push it all the way up, it stops right at 500 pounds. So th this Kodiak uh, that we have here today is the first Series 2 outfitted with the Aeroset 6650 carbon fiber floats. We also have straight floats for the airplane that Aeroset makes, their 6750 straight floats. What makes these so special is they are the, the, the largest composite float made and they are the only carbon fiber float made. Uh, this, air, this float is about 400 pounds lighter than a comparable metal float. So right there you get two extra people or you know another hour's worth of fuel that you can take without weight savings. On top of that, they're a two-piece molded construction. So unlike the metal floats from uh, yesteryear, these you barely have to pump at all. I took this on a month-long float demo tour last year. I pumped the floats twice in a month. 
I had many nights where the airplane stayed overnight on the water. They just don't leak. So from an operator's perspective, it's, it's, an, it's an amazing uh, asset to have. On top of that, um, there's three float lockers that you can store things in in each float. Uh, they're designed actually to be hydrodynamic and aerodynamic. So they're great on the water, but they're also great in the air. It's a very stable float plane in the air. Um, it's, it's actually the fastest float plane made. Our, at altitude on a standard day, we'll true out with the floats at about 162 knots. The other nice thing about the floats is the little small touches that Aeroset thinks about. One being these really nice uh, latches on the float lockers. So that it's very easy as a pilot to tell if they're closed and they're also very easy to open and close. Well, I'm standing here next to our big door. This door is 49 and a quarter by 49 and a quarter. Uh, it's, which means it can easily load pallets. On wheels, this door is actually designed to, to fold flat. So you can take a pickup truck, an ambulance, or a forklift and actually put very heavy things right into the back. And we have a lot of Kodiaks that operate uh, as skydive airplanes around the world. Uh, Air Med, medevac type transport uh, is another good use for the airplane. Uh, overall, uh, on wheels, the Kodiak, depending on how you have it outfitted, uh, can carry up to about 3,500 pounds of useful load. On floats, that's somewhere between 2,500 and 2,800 pounds. So the, the thing that makes the Kodiak different than just about any other airplane on the market, and certainly different than any other turboprop on the market, is the way the wing is designed. The Kodiak actually has two different wings married into one. So you see the notch in the, dis in the leading edge, which is what we call the discontinuous leading edge. That's the area that really never stalls. So you can take a Kodiak and have the stick all the way back with a zero thrust setting on the power and the outboard section of the wing is actually not stalled at all. I have full aileron control and the exact same roll rate in a, in a stall that I do when the airplane's flying normally. This airplane being based in the Northeast is going to operate on floats in the summertime and wheels in the wintertime. You'll notice the airplane actually has TKS on it. Uh, the TKS on floats isn't hooked up, but when it goes back on wheels, the, uh, they'll put the fluid back in and it'll operate. It'll be a flight in a no nice airplane. So one thing a lot of people don't know about the Kodiak is that between 2007 to 2018, 10 years of production, we built just over 240, 250 airplanes. Uh, but from the early, very early production models, we've made continuous improvements to the airframe. Uh, it's what we're calling a decade of improvements. The airplane built today is totally different than that airplane that was built in 2008. Some of those uh, improvements are easily visible here in the interior. First off, the interior as a whole is brand new. It's a full composite interior, so the soundproofing is amazing, it's very lightweight, and it's very refined. You can see simple things like PSU vents, uh, they're aluminum, they're flush mounted, every detail was thought about. Other uh, refinement uh, pieces that we've done is we've sealed up the cabin as a whole uh, so the environmental control system works a lot better, you have much better heat, much better air conditioning. Uh, we also have done things like added inflatable door seals, uh, we've added uh, synthetic vision as standard equipment, uh, we've added things like uh, bleed air mufflers, so the cabin volume uh, is a lot lower. So overall, this airplane today is a completely different airplane than what came off the line in 2008. So the Kodiak uh, Series 2, Kodiak 100 Series 2, starting price is 2.15, uh, so 2,150,000. The floats add an additional 400,000. So this, this airplane that we're gonna be flying today is equipped at right about 2.8 million. And uh, one on wheels average price is between 2.3 and 2.5 million with standard options on it. So new with series two is the Kodiak care package that comes with the airplane. Uh, basically that's the package of services that come with the plane when they're delivered. So everything from a year worth of camp uh, to ESP, Pratt & Whitney ESP programs, 
And in addition to that, uh, you can even get a, uh, a dedicated representative. So if you are AOG with your Kodiak, there's one number to call and they are familiar with the airplane, familiar with all of the providers and certain suppliers, uh, components on the plane, and they can get you fixed up and running in no time flat. Uh, we just uh, departed Wyndham Airport in uh, eastern Connecticut and the Kodiak on floats. Surprised at how fast the airplane got off. What's typical ground roll with the uh, with flaps, with typical loading? Uh, less than a thousand feet on the runway. Now this, uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, torque limiting in this engine. It's not fed at control, so you do have to be careful not to over torque it. Exactly. Yep, so it's uh, like all PT6s, you have to set the power in the airplane. Um, after you know a few hours in the plane, it becomes very easy, easy and simple to do. Uh, the beauty is we actually have up to about 900 horsepower. Should you get yourself into a sticky situation, uh, you could go to the firewall. Of course, you'd over torque and over temp the engine, uh, but it gives you that extra bit of power, so you could get out of a situation that you shouldn't have been in. So, what kind of performance differences between a uh, wheel-equipped airplane and float-equipped airplane as far as uh, climb and cruise speed? Uh, there, honestly, there's not that much difference. Uh, cruise speed, you lose about 10 knots. Uh, no, excuse me. In cruise speed, you lose about 20 knots. Um, climb performance, you lose a couple hundred feet a minute uh, with the floats. The, the takeoff roll isn't that much uh, worse. It's just a couple hundred feet. Um, on wheels, it's less than 1,000 feet. On floats, it'd be, I think, 1,200 feet. Uh, of course, today with the large headwind, I think we're off at about 400 feet. And of course we're down low, we're at 2,500 feet, uh, showing about 133, 134 indicated, about typical? Yeah, we're, we've got her pulled back quite a bit just because it's bumpy and, and we've got passengers. Uh, if we went up, if we were going across country, say, to uh, western New York State or somewhere, we'd be up at 10,000 feet and we'd be seeing right about 145 indicated, which would be close to about 160 knots uh, true airspeed. Uh, at that altitude, in a float plane, we're about 350 pounds per hour. Let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, float plane transitions. Uh, I'm a fairly new, minted seaplane pilot. What do you suspect it might take for uh, somebody transitioning from a smaller seaplane to a big Kodiak with floats? Going to a bigger float plane, the turbine actually makes things a little bit, uh, or quite a bit different, I should say. I started flying, as most people do, piston float planes. Um, I was used to being able to go into docks that weren't set up for float planes by nosing into a dock. Uh, in a turbine, you can't do some of those things because the nose actually sticks out in front. Uh, in addition, when I shut down the engine uh, on the water, my propeller continues to turn. It doesn't stop immediately like it does in a piston. Now, if a float-equipped Kodiak seems like a niche airplane, it might be, and Kodiak's latest Northeast dealership, Clay Lacey Aviation, sees an opportunity to fill a void for some jet setters. Clay Lacey is actually going to be doing something very interesting because they believe the Kodiak is a perfect complement to their fleet of private jets. They have over 100 airplanes on their charter certificate. And the Kodiak is the perfect complement. So somebody, say, that wants to go from New York City can get picked up in the East River on this Kodiak on floats, flown up to White Plains or out to the Hamptons, dropped off either at their home or right next to their private jet to go somewhere international. So for the Clay Lacey market, this is the, this is the perfect complement to their business jet. Uh, in addition to Clay Lacey, we have a network of dealers domestically as well as internationally. Uh, we all the way from Japan to Southeast Asia, Africa, Europe, and then of course we have a plethora of dealers uh, here domestically. Now you can read a full report on the Quest Kodiak Series 2 in the September 2018 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. I'm Larry Anglisano. Thanks for watching.